New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Across the street, Nick. The bus stop's on the other corner. Okay, Patsy. Oh, let's go. We had the green light. Hey, hey, you flippy Get that, boys. It was... Ah! Now, the case of the invisible treasure. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by a new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Patsy has gone shopping with Nick in order to help him choose the right gift for an elderly friend who has a birthday next week. They finally made a selection at Madame Helene's gown shop on Fifth Avenue and are now working their way through the crowds of shoppers toward the street door. Patsy, do you really think she'll like it? She'll love it, Nick. But she's 73. That little old for a black lace nightgown? <laughs> That's exactly why she'll love it. From now on, I'll bet you're her favorite person. Well, either that or she'll never speak to me again. Oh, Nick, would you mind if I took just a minute to... Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. I bumped into you and I... Why, it's Miss Bowen. Oh. Well, you're Al Harper, aren't you? Sure, that's right. And here's Mr. Carter. Why, hello, Al. What are you doing out of the pen? I thought your sentence still had a couple of years to run. Good behavior. And believe me, it's going to be good from now on. I'm glad to hear it, Al. Yes, sir. I'm strictly legit now. I did a lot of thinking in the pen, and it, it started me on the right track. No hard feelings, then? Not a bit, Nick. I'm grateful to you. Fine. Well, I, I got to run. I got a date. See you around, huh? Sure, sure. So long. Goodbye. So long. Well, imagine that. Al Harper going straight. Must be doing all right, too. He looks prosperous. Well, I just hope it lasts. Come on, Nick. It's over this way. What's over that way? Well, didn't I tell you? I want to stop at the perfume counter. <laughs> Now, now, ladies, ladies, please, I'll get you all just as fast as I can. After all, I'm only helping out here in the perfume department. Uh, this I... spring violet does not suit my personality. Show me something daintier. Uh, yes, madam, if you'll only... Clerk, uh, I'm in a very great hurry. Would you please... I, I'll be with you in a moment, madam. I've been a customer here for 20 years, and I demand some consideration. Clerk, I know I'm next. Uh, very well, madam. Uh, now, we have a very lovely selection... I know of... exactly what I want. It's oh. a cologne called Heavenly Sin. Heavenly Sin? Uh, heavenly sin. Uh, now, now, let me see. It's right uh, there in front of you, those large bottles with a cut glass stopper. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Let me see one of those, too. Yeah. Nothing doing. I'm buying all he has in stock. Oh, a harder, eh? You will see about that. Clerk, I'll take a bottle of heavenly sin. I spoke first. I'm having all you have in stock, clerk. Uh, I'm sorry, madam, uh, but it's against our policy to disappoint a customer. But I And told... we only have a few bottles left, so I'm afraid I'll have to set a limit. One bottle of heavenly sin to a customer. Mm, that's what you get for being greedy. You and your fancy mink coat. Oh. I'll wrap it up for you, madam. Hey, Patsy, let's get out of here. <laughs> all these women getting on your nerves, Nick. Oh, it's awful. Well, I think shopping's Fun. I beg your pardon. Are you speaking to me? Yes. Uh, would you do me a great favor? Well, well, yes. What is it? Here's twenty dollars. Uh, will you buy me a bottle of Heavenly Sin? Of course. Uh, the price is fourteen ninety eight. Keep the rest for your trouble. You don't need to do that, clerk. Yeah, uh, just a moment, madam. You can wrap up a bottle of that for me too. Yeah, of course, madam. Hey, what is this stuff anyway, Bessie? I never heard of it before. Hey, you. Uh, I beg your pardon? Yeah, you. Snap it up. I'm in a hurry. I'll be right with you, sir. Now, uh, madam, uh, that will be fourteen ninety-eight plus tax. Look, let it... them uh, dames wait. You got any heavenly sin? I'll be with you in a minute, sir. You'll be with me right now. How many bottles you got left? Uh, uh, only two. I'll I... take them both. Uh, I'm sorry. One bottle to a customer. Nuts to that. I said I'd take them both. Yes, but I... Do you want me to get tough about it? Oh, I'll wrap them up for you immediately, sir. Yeah. Nick, what is this? 
I don't know, but I'm getting interested. Here's your money, clerk. Oh, thank you, madam. I'll have your change in a moment. Well, how about my bottle of heavenly sin? Oh, here it is, madam. That'll be 14. Hey, now wait you're... a minute. I said I'm buying all you got. Give me that. Oh, uh, no, you don't. Get your hands off that look, bottle. I'll pay you for it, lady. Now let go. I uh, said get your hands off. But I'm going to pay you I'll for it. I'll show but... you. Hey, <laughs> hey, what are you doing? You got to hit him with her umbrella. Why, you old battle axe. Oh, now, please. And if you please. lay a finger on this bottle, I'll scream for the police. Oh, now, look, lady. I'll give you 25 bucks for that bottle of heavenly sin. No. You can't call me names. And 50 bucks. I'll have you know I don't need your money. Get out of my way. A hundred bucks. I wouldn't give you this bottle of cologne for a million dollars. Here's your money, clerk. Uh, uh, Just a moment, madam. Uh, You have 26 cents change coming. Keep it. And you'll never see me in this store again. I never was so insulted in all my life. Hey, hey, sister, let's be sensible about it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Such a scene. Now, let's see. Uh, This other bottle goes to... uh, The young lady here. I'll pay for it. But, Nick, I have the money. I'll give it back to the young lady who gave it to you, Patsy. Now, wait a minute. She's buying that for me. I'm afraid not. There's something about this heavenly sin cologne that interests me, too. Why, you... You keep the money. We'll keep the heavenly sin. We'll have to cross the street, Nick. I get the bus on the opposite corner. Yes, I know, but wait till the light changes. Yeah. Nick... Why in the world did you buy that cologne? Because I'm curious to know why everyone wanted to corner the market on it. <laughs> that girl in the mink coat could have murdered us both. After all, I did promise to buy it for her. Awfully pretty girl, wasn't she? Well, if you like bleached blondes. <laughs> Patsy, what could there be about that cologne to make even a thug like that other character offer a hundred dollars for it? I can't imagine. Unless it's awfully scarce. Well, you take it back to the office, will you? As soon as I get there, we'll see what's in the bottle. Well, uh, aren't you coming with me? No, I have to pick up some new chemicals from my lab. I'll be there as soon as I... Oh, oh here's the light. Come on. Hey, hey, let me chew. Let me chew, will you? Nick, that's voice. Hey. Isn't that... Oh, 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 it's the bottle. It's the right one of a Are you hurt? Are you hurt? I... I guess not. In my knees. Oh, lucky that taxi had good brakes. Mr. Bowen! Mr. Bowen! Are you all right? Oh, hello, Al. Oh, I'm okay. But, Nick, I've got to tell you something. Here, let me help you pick up those packets. Oh, thanks, Al. I've got the rest of them. Nick, listen to me. Oh, you tell me I... about it later, Patsy. Here's a taxi. Get in. But... In you go. I want to stand up on a crowded bus after the shake-up you had. But, Nick, I... You better tell the driver to take you home to change your stockings first. Uh... I'll see you at the office in about an hour. So long. Any calls for me, Patsy? Not a thing. How do you feel after your accident? I tried to tell you, Nick, it was no accident. What? Someone pushed me in front of that taxi. Pushed you? Are you sure? Of course I am. I distinctly felt a hand in the middle of my back. Wow. And that was just about the time that Al Harper showed up. No, no, it wasn't Al. I saw him in the crowd 10 or 15 feet away just before it happened. Besides, I know who it was. You do? Who? That same man who tried to buy off all the heavenly sin cologne. What? Not that D's Dem and Do's character at the perfume counter. That's the one. I heard his voice behind me just as I was pushed. And I was right. There is something important about that cologne. Let's have a look at the bottle. Oh, Nick. We can't. Well, why can't we? It's all smashed. I had to throw it away. Well, I didn't notice it was broken when we picked up the packages after the accident. We must have been too excited, but after I got in the taxi, I began to notice that the air just reeked of cologne. So I looked down, and there it was, running out of the package. It was a mess. Did you notice anything unusual about the cologne itself? No, it smelled very ordinary to me. There wasn't anything inside the bottle except cologne. No, not a thing. Hmm. Oh, by the way, do you have my box of bath salts? Your what? My bath salts. They were in a package just about the same size as the cologne bottle was. I thought you picked it up when I fell down. You mean a package the same size and shape as the one the cologne was in is missing? Well, if you don't have it, it must be. Well, there's the answer. Huh? That's why you were pushed in front of that taxi, so that you'd drop the packages, and in the excitement, somebody could get away with one. But who'd want my bath salts? They got the bath salts by mistake, Patsy. What? It was a cologne they were after. And they wanted it badly enough to risk killing you to get it. Oh, why, of course. 
The packages looked alike, and they stole the wrong one. Exactly. Oh, I wish I hadn't broken that bottle. Now we may never know what made it so valuable. Well, whatever it was, that blonde in the mink coat knew it, too. How about the other woman, the battle axe? Oh, no, she didn't know, because she wasn't even interested until they tried to get the cologne away from her. That's right. She only bought it out of stubbornness. But you know, if we could locate her, and if she still has the cologne... Maybe we can find the answer that way. But we don't know who she is. No, we don't. But she said she'd been a customer of Madame Helene's for 20 years. I'll see what I can find out in the store in the morning. I'm sorry, sir, but I never saw the lady before. I see. Well, are you the regular clerk in the perfume section? I am not a clerk at all. I'm the department supervisor. I was just helping out yesterday in an emergency. An emergency? Yes. Miss Brochet, our buyer and chief sales lady in perfume, had to be rushed to the hospital with acute appendicitis. She was operated on yesterday afternoon. Uh Uh-oh. And I won't be able to see her for a day or two. No, I'm afraid not. Oh, say, you know I've been wondering why everyone was so anxious to buy up our stock of heavenly sin. I wonder, too. But it looks as though I'm going to have trouble finding out. How'd you make out, Nick? Oh, I didn't. Nobody at the store has any idea who that woman is. Well, I think I know. You do? How did you find out? By reading the morning papers. Huh? Look. Widow slain in West Side Rooming House. Body of Mrs. Eldora Telford, 47, was discovered this morning. Not there. The next paragraph. In a shabby room, reeking of strong cologne. That's what I mean. Yeah, it does tie in. Oh, but even so. Go on, go on. Start reading there. Mrs. Telford evidently put up a determined fight for her life. Uh Grasped in her right hand was a broken cologne bottle of heavy cut glass. The label reading, ironically enough, heavenly sin. Now tell me I'm wrong. No, Patsy, you're right. But we've found what we were looking for too late. With the brutal murder of Mrs. Telford and the destruction of the only other bottle of cologne Nick knows about, it seems that his chance of solving the riddle has vanished. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the invisible treasure... Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick believes that Mrs. Eldora Telford was murdered because she had in her possession a bottle of cologne called Heavenly Sin. But what the secret of the cologne may be, he doesn't know. Nick and Patsy are now in Mrs. Telford's room to see whether they can learn anything there. The lodging house janitor is with them. Well, Patsy, there's no chance of finding out anything from the cologne itself. Bottle's completely smashed. It looks as though she used it as a weapon to defend herself. Yeah, nobody scared Miss Telford. She got mind of her own. I could tell that at the store yesterday. Funny, nobody heard the fight. They've been thinking maybe it happened early last night when most of my rumors is out. Well, even so, you'd think somebody would hear it. Yeah, but that new girl across the hall, she got the radio on so loud I got to pound steam pipe three times. Radio? Yeah, one of those mystery program, all screaming, shooting and yelling and carrying now, on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You said a new girl? Yeah, sure, she used to move in last night. Right across the hall. Come on, let's go over there. Nick... A radio blasting away might have covered up the sound of a fight. Yes, especially if the house was almost deserted. Is this the room? Yeah, but I, mean, I don't think she'd be home. Oh, we'll see. Uh, what does your new rumor look like, Mr. Hanson? No, well, she was so pretty like anything. She dressed so good and fine for a coat. And... Was it brown for her? Yeah, sure. Hmm. She didn't have blonde hair, did she? Yeah, that's her long yellow hair. Uh, you know her, huh? Wouldn't be surprised. Oh, we're not getting anywhere knocking. I'm going in. But it wasn't even locked. No reason why it should be, Patsy. She's gone. Why do you want to go to Madame Helene's gown shop again? There's one more thing I want to check. 
they handle that cologne regularly, they may have the address of someone else who's bought a bottle sometime in the past. You mean on a charge account? Well, either that or a record of delivery. But, Nick, if the cologne is so valuable to these crooks, I can't understand why they let Mrs. Telford spill hers all over the room. Patsy, I'm not so sure it's the cologne they're after. Then what is it? Well, there was one thing missing in Mrs. Telford's room. The stopper to that bottle. Why, that's right. I didn't see it either. And it's the sort of thing you'd be sure to notice. That's right. It was very large and made it look like cut glass, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Oh, if we'd only saved the pieces of the bottle you had. Well, why, I, I did. You did? Yes. That package was such a mess, I didn't like to leave it in the taxi, so I carried it up to my room and threw it in the wastebasket. Well, that's great. I'll stop at the next corner. You can get a taxi. Go home and get that glass stopper and take it to the office. I'll meet you there in less than an hour. <laughs> but I'm going right out again, Ruby. Oh, you're sure a busy girl, I say that. <laughs> no time to be lazy on my job, Ruby. <gasps> Why, what? Come on in, sister, and make yourself at home. Yeah, we've been waiting for you. But, but, Mr. Carter, it would be a tremendous amount of work to check through all those records. Sorry, but I don't care how much work it is. I want to find out whether you know anybody who ever bought a bottle of Heavenly Sin cologne. Well, I, I suppose it could be done. Good. Is there anything you can tell me? I'm afraid not. If Miss Brochet weren't in the hospital, she might know. Do you sell very much of that cologne? No, very little, as a matter of fact. Heavenly Sin is an imported scent. We get only a half dozen bottles every now and then. Where's it imported from? It's made by a small concern in France. Miss Brochet attended to the ordering. Say, uh, come to think of it, I've never even seen it on the counter till yesterday. Why was it there then? Well, when Miss Brochet was taken to the hospital so unexpectedly, uh, well, I had to step in. The shipment had just arrived, so I put it on display. Ah. Did she usually unpack it herself? I imagine so. I see. Well, please have those records checked as soon as possible. Yes. I think I'm beginning to understand what this is all about. Well, I certainly wish I did. I know Miss Patsy ain't in her room, Mr. Carter. When I seen her about two hours ago, she says she's going right out again. I know, I know. She was supposed to meet me at my office. Oh, this here's her room. Thanks. Uh, holy smoke. Well, would you look at that? What struck this place, anyway? This room has been searched. And thoroughly. And after me cleaning it all up only this morning. Oh, confounded. The wastebasket's empty. I, I told you I made up the room, Mr. Carter. I, I dumped all that stuff out of the wastebasket in the incinerator. You did? Oh, good. Grief. Well, all except one little bitty old piece of glass. Some kind of bottle stopper, I guess. You saved that stopper? Huh? What'd you do with it? The bottle stopper? Well, I, I didn't think Miss Patsy cared see as how she throwed it away. It was so pretty, I was going to take it home for my little girl to play with. Ruby, you hold on to that stopper, and I'll see that you get the biggest tip you ever had. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Carl. I'll get it for you right away. No, no, not now. I haven't time. I've got to find Patsy. <laughs> Mr. Biggs, this is Nick Carter. Hello. Did you find out anything about the people who bought that cologne? Uh, yes, Mr. Carter, and it's rather surprising, too. Uh, what did you find? Well, Miss Brochet must have stocked it just for a few special customers, because each shipment contained only six bottles. You know who got them? I'm coming to that. I suppose it's why she never put them on display. What do you mean? All six bottles went out on the delivery truck every time, and always to the same customers. The same customers? Yes. You have their names? Yes, the uh, list is right here. Uh, Miss Lillian Lamont, uh, Mr. William Avery, uh, Mrs. George Nestor, uh, Mr. Alan Harper. What? Uh, Mr. Uh, hmm? uh, oh, Mr. Alan Harper, 
374 West Corey Street. And then there was a... Never mind the rest. I've got what I need to know. I'm asking you for the last time, sister. What did you do with that stopper? I tell you, I don't know. She's lying, Al. Yeah, let me slap a little sense into her. You'll get your chance, Curly, if she doesn't open up. When that man pushed me and the bottle broke, I wasn't interested in it anymore. I throw it away. Now, don't try to kid me. I saw you get into that taxi with it, and Lil trade you all the way home in another cab. She didn't throw anything out of that cab, Al. I'll swear to that. So you had it when you went into your house. Now, where is it? I don't know. No? <laughs> Maybe that'll teach you I'm not fooling. What did you do with that stopper? I, I threw it in the wastebasket. She's stalling again, Al. Curly and I tore that room apart. It wasn't there. Give me your chance, Al. I'll make that damn talk. You're going to get your chance in just a minute. Now, sister, for the last time, are you going to tell me? I don't know where it is. I don't know. Okay, you're asking for it. Curly, you can take over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Al, I'll do that. Lil? What? Turn on the radio and turn it up good and loud. We don't want nobody to hear this. Curly Martin advances toward Patsy as the radio blares forth loudly to cover the sound of her screams. We'll see what happens in just a minute. Now for the conclusion of the case of the invisible treasure. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. The cut glass stopper of a cologne bottle is so important to Al Harper and his gang that they've committed murder to get possession of one. Now they've taken Patsy to Harper's home to force her to reveal where the stopper she had is hidden. Turn that radio up louder, Lil. Okay, Curly. Yeah, that's better. Now I'll just start by... Oh, no, please. I tell you, I don't know. Go on, Curly. Pound some sense into her head. Yeah. No, please. No. Hey, open up in there. Help. Help. Hey, shut up, Help. you. Shut up. Open up or I'll break that door down. Al, it's the law. Move aside, Lil. I'm going to shoot right through. Oh. My arm. Stay right where you are, Harper. If there's any more shooting to be done, I'll do it. You're through. Oh, it was a lucky thing you were on the fire escape outside the window when Al started to shoot, Nick. Not all luck, Patsy. When I learned that Al Harper was one of the people to whom those bottles of cologne were delivered, I felt pretty sure they'd take you to his place. So I... So you brought the police with you. That's right. They went up inside the house while I came up the fire escape. Uh Uh-huh. But, Nick, have you found out what was so important about that cut glass bottle stopper? Mm Mm-hmm. And here it is. I'll show you. Oh, it is pretty. Look how it sparkles. Hey, wait a minute, and I'll show you some real sparkles. Oh, Nick, what are you going to do with that hammer? Oh, you broke it. I certainly did. Why, it was full of water. Mm Mm-hmm. Sealed in. And that's not all. Look. Diamonds! Why, there must be... About $20,000 worth in every bottle of that cologne. You see, Patsy, in water, diamonds are almost invisible. And inside that cut glass stopper, they were completely so. Then Al and his gang were smugglers? You guessed it. That heavenly sin cologne was bottled in France by a company which was really only the front for a gang of crooks. And the perfume buyer at Madame Helene's gown shop was the receiver on this end? That's right. Madame Helene didn't know anything about it. The Hmm. buyer, Marie Bruchet unpacked every shipment personally and sent it out on the delivery truck to the members of the gang. So when she was suddenly taken to the hospital with appendicitis, it upset all their plans. I'll say it did. The big shipment was due that day. She knew that if she wasn't there, it'd be put on the counter. Uh Uh-huh. So from the hospital, she managed to get word to Al and the others. And they all came down to buy it up before anyone else had a chance. Right. And if it hadn't been for Mrs. Telford's stubbornness, they'd have got away with it. Golly. Nick... Was it Lil who murdered Mrs. Telford? No, Curly. Lil took that room across the hall to keep an eye on Mrs. Telford so she could let Curly into the house when nobody else was there. I see. By the way, doesn't the Customs Bureau pay a reward for turning in smugglers? It does, and you'll get your share of it. 
Oh. Not only that, I'm going to get you a nice present to make up for all the trouble you've had. Why, Nick, how wonderful. What kind of a present? A nice big bottle of cologne. <laughs> Nick, how about a word concerning next week's case? Well, Bob, next week's case seemed easy at first, but then we... Uh Oh, I'll take it, Bob. If it's that mysterious woman... Hello? Call Super 2848. That is all. Look, I don't know who you are, but... Oh, she hung up again. Nick, this is getting pretty bad. She's been calling me, too, and... And last night when I got home, I found this note pinned to the pillow on my bed. Huh? Call Super 284. Patsy, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Look, you two stay here. Maybe I can find out... Nick, not so fast. You haven't told us about next week's adventure. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right, Bob. Well, as I said, it looked quite easy. Uh, But only at first. Yes, you're right, Patsy. It turned out to be very tough. Well, uh, what do you call this adventure, Nick? I call it the case of the classical clue. Nick Carter is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.